Hi. Hey, Lucia. How are you? I'm doing well, and you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Finally, to finally meet you <laughs> face to face, kind <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, do you want me to like already start with the questions, or? <laughs> if you want to, I mean, how was your day? You've had a you've had a whole day there. Yeah. <laughs> um. I had a really long day actually. Um, yeah. It was partly, well, like in the afternoon, like I got up, I got off uh, high school like at 3 p.m., which is very mm. late for me. Um, <laughs> but like, I hate going to high school. So of course, I didn't have a great time there. I hate right. Okay. And it's so weird also like with the masks and everything. And it's also oh, winter. Absolutely. So it's even harder to get off bed, <laughs> which is which is, because it's really, really cold. So true. So it's yeah. really hard. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm well, not you... a morning person either. So, oh yeah, totally. Yeah, see, I kind of am, so I I can't relate, but I can imagine how that must be. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, do you do any particular subjects? Like, do you, you pick your subjects and stuff? Oh no, like in high school. Yeah, like what subjects do you do? Um, so I don't know how is it like there in Australia, but like hmm. here, um, so we have like six years of high school, yep. and then the last two years you get to choose between like four kind of orientations. Um, so it's like you have artistic, which is the one that I'm doing. Cool. Uh, there's the other one that is like more related to like law and all of that. Like it depends on what you want mm. to do later in university. Yeah. Um, because like here, it doesn't work like every, uh, like in the rest of the world. So like yeah. depending on what orientation you do, like for example, if you do bio the biology uh, orientation, you can't, for example, um, go to like a university that's, I don't know, if you want to be a lawyer, you can't do that uh, orientation because right. like they don't allow you to like study there. So you have to do like the other one. And you know, that's it works really differently. <laughs> um, but the subjects that I actually have, um, I have like a specific subjects of the, of the orientation. And then I have another yeah. ones, other ones that are like shared with another orientation um got it but the ones that are specific which are like of course my favorites are uh well i have uh theater i have music Perfect. i have dance i don't enjoy dance that much but <laughs> it's still okay, I'm okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> then i have like art like we we basically like draw or like do sculptures which is crazy but we got to do the sculpture awesome. um it's amazing yeah, and like many other things. Uh, then yeah, what cool. else? Uh, I don't remember what other subject do I have. Um, <laughs> Are there like core subjects? Like, is there a sort of mathematics, or do you have to do that? Or um, I well, like this year, I don't have maths or physics at all, yes. which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the previous years, I had maths and. I didn't do well at all in math. Yeah, so right. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy that I don't have it this year. Perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> well, that's great. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so how many years have you got left then? Have you only got one or two years? Um, I'm on the last year. So I finished in November. Amazing. Finally. <laughs> Get it. All right. Well, good luck with it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of questions right now <laughs> on here. Oh, good. So, uh, do you want me to, I don't know, with what questions to start with, like with mine or the ones that I have here? I trust you. I think you can pick a good one to start with. <laughs> hmm. Or we can uh, wait a bit longer. I don't, I, I don't mind. I'm, I mean, I'm really not fussed. I've got nowhere to be technically now. So that's fine. Oh, yeah. I read that they're like, you're in lockdown again. <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in lockdown, 5.0 as it were. Um, but yeah, look, I've got nowhere to be, so no rush at all. Yeah, my, I've got a friend, um, like, well, we met through um, a musical theatre company online. Uh, she's yeah, cool. also from Australia, and she was doing uh, Chicago, like, oh, uh, right. musical. And yesterday was her last show. So, because like everything got cancelled, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's the nature of it, I guess. So it can mm. creep up on you at any point. You just have to be ready to drop everything and go. <laughs> Which is fine. It's fine. Yeah. We're fine. <laughs> Oh, so do you want me to start? <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, let's start. <laughs> so um, the first question that I have is um, uh, how or when uh, did you realize that you wanted to be an actor? Mm, great question. Um, I guess when I started, when I decided that I wanted to be an actor was probably, it was actually a lot later in my life. I think it was around... Because, I mean, keep in mind, I sort of, I grew up in a country town where sort of the only thing that I was sort of surrounded by were people who were in trade. So people who were builders and concreters and um, then there were cattle farmers and, you know, sort of fences and um, lots of hands-on hard, like, like hard yakka work, essentially, is what we, what we would say. Um, but uh, there were very very few theater opportunities where I was from. So essentially I didn't realize that it was a thing that I could do as a profession until I sort of branched out and sort of did a show out of town. Um, so I reckon I was in year 11 when I was like, actually, this is what I want to do. Um, because at the time I was like, I was, I am still, but I was quite a creative person in that. Like I, <laughs> Like I did, I did uh, year 11 and 12 graph, um, graphics in, in high school early. So I sort of got that done um, because I just really loved sort of geometry and sort of drawing like perspective drawings and also like, like designing posters and stuff like that. That just really interested me, um, which is really cool. So I did that, but then, yeah, I also did music and I did drama and I did, um, I did all like the, school shows that came every two years at our high school. Um, but yeah, even after doing, so I did Little Shop of Horrors, 13 the musical and Aida um, in, like throughout my six years of high school. Um, and it wasn't really until I did Aida that I was like, oh, this feels like this is right. Like this feels like the right thing to do. So I guess that was when I, I sort of discovered that that was something I wanted to do. But I guess how I discovered it was was sort of like meeting people who had studied music theatre and who were doing music theatre. And I realised, oh, that's actually something you can do. That's crazy. That's that's absolutely nuts in my brain. Um, so that's sort of how the, the journey started, really. Like, I mean, I always sung as a kid and I always, I always loved dancing. I, I mean, again, I took dancing, took up dancing late. I started, I only started doing hip hop and tap in year eight. So I think I was like uh, just 15 or 14, yeah, 14, 15. Um, and yeah, only did jazz and ballet in university. So um, yeah, and that's sort of how it, how it started, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any inspirations? Hmm, uh, Hugh Jackman is the first one that comes to my brain. Um, because I think he's not only is he, he has had a lot of success or probably what he would, he would see as success and what we would all see as success, um, in this industry being someone who's, you know, been on Broadway, who's done hit, you know, he's, he's been on TV, he's been on many a movies that he's still, that he's still, you know, currently filming and stuff like he's still very successful and he's from Australia. So it's, it's like, that that's obviously like a, a beacon for me. It's like, oh yes, it's possible. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean like he's, he's the first one that comes to mind. Uh, like as a singer, I've always looked up to Josh Groban um, as a, as a vocalist, just cause I think his, his voice is just absolutely insane. And um, I sort of listened to every album that he's had and sort of his evolution of his voice as well, even though he's, from the first album to the latest one, he's been successful, but uh, through that success, his voice has been able to change and he's still had success. So that versatility has sort of been really cool to look up to. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, I think they're the only ones that sort of come to my mind. Hugh Jackman's definitely at the top because I just think he's a top human being as well. I think he's a he's a beautiful role model for humility and um, uh, being nice to people without there being a sense of hierarchy between himself and the person he's talking to. Like he talks to people like they're human, not just, you know, yeah. another number, so to speak. Um, he's a really genuine human being and I, and I love that. I love that about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have any dream roles? I have many. I think I've got a buck. I think I've got a bucket list of, um, of things that I would love to do. Um, Dear Evan Hansen is one of them. Being Evan Hansen would be one of them. Obviously that's age dependent. So it sort of has to be now or never. <laughs> um, uh, uh, what else? Uh, Fierro's always been at the top of my list. I hope, I hope that happens. Honestly, that's, that's like touch wood. Hope that happens. Um, uh, I'd love to play Sweeney Todd one day. I would love to play Bob from Company one day. Bobby. Um, I would, ooh, and maybe one more, one more. What's a good one? Um, yeah, said Sweeney Todd. Um, ooh. Nah, I can't think of another one. But yeah, Evan Hansen's up the top, definitely. Um, oh, actually, I'd love to... I kind of love if, like, if Dogfight was still, like, a thing and could still, like, tour and stuff, I'd love to play Birdlace. Like, that'd be very cool, just because he's a very flawed character and that's very interesting to me. Um, he is, like... Yeah, it's sort of, like... Evan Hansen and him are very similar characters. I guess they're just sort of different ages and very different circumstances, but like they're just super flawed and uh, there's sort of like a beauty in that. And I, I, and I also love the material that they get to sing as well. So yeah, I think they're my top couple. I'm sure there's more, I just can't think of them. <laughs> uh, have you had any mishaps on stage? Oh, plenty. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, but I'll, I'll, oh, not plenty. Not like, I don't make a mistake every second show or anything. But it's like, think, like I've had things where it has been like absolutely my fault. Like I've absolutely like screwed up. And there are some things that have like technically throughout the show gone wrong and therefore have affected my performance. So like, or, or the performance of everyone in general. Um, uh, the first one that comes to mind, and I just told this the other day, actually, um, are Jersey Boys. Uh, my f- Bob's first entrance that he walks onto the stage is about 25 minutes into the show. So we haven't seen this character yet. And so the f- his first entrance has to be like, boom, here I am, right? And he, and he has to be like, he has to sort of own the stage from the get-go. Um, and I was stretching. And so, so the costume was the... I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it's like sort of colored rainbow shirt, which is like my favorite shirt ever. Um, And these sort of blue pants that they wear throughout the show. Um, And uh, on this particular, there were a couple of sets of pants, but on this particular show, I had the tightest fitting ones. Like they were sort of tightly fit. Um, Not for any reason. Um, They just were tighter than the other two pairs. Um, And I was stretching. And I think about 16, no, so yeah, about 10 seconds before I needed to walk on stage, I split the middle of my pants, like right where you, right where you don't want it to split, basically. Um, and, but it was like, it wasn't huge, but it was big enough that I had to hide it. Um, and so I had split my pants and luckily I was wearing sort of nondescript underwear. So you wouldn't have been able to, wouldn't have been able to see anything. But like, the thing was that they only had enough time to put like one bobby pin in. I was, cause I, I ripped it and I knew, ex- I knew in that instant what had happened. And I yelled, I yelled for someone to get a bobby pin. <sighs> cause I was like, ah, crap. Um, anyway, so I went on with this sort of pinned up, really small hole in the crotch of my pants. 
And, and again, Bob, so he doesn't come on for 25 minutes, but he then doesn't go off stage for at least half an hour. So there was no point to like change my pants is what I'm saying. So I had the, I had to hide this entire show from the audience that I had split my pants. Um, I think I was successful because I don't think anyone saw anything or anyone, no one said anything to me. I said to people, I was like, oh, I had a hole in my pants. They was like, really? I didn't realize. I was like, oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's probably the top, probably at the top. And then there are other things like saying the wrong line at the wrong time or, and, and there was this particular one in the, in the same show in, the, in Jersey Boys. It was like the first preview. So I was like super nervous. Um, but I turned to the audience to narrate the next section and started a line that definitely comes like 20 minutes later. Um, and I started and I said like the first five words and I, my brain went, stop, that's the wrong line. And so I just froze for what felt like about 20 seconds, but it was in reality like two. Um, and I stopped and I was like, oh, that's not the line, that's not the line. And then I found it and just kept going. I just had to, I just had to find something. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I stopped myself. I, I, the way I stopped myself, I sort of went, oh, and this and this and that. Well, wait. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> like I said audibly, I was like, no, that's not it. That's it. <laughs> um, and that's just the beauty of live theatre. People make mistakes, which is awesome. Um, it sort of reminds people, it certainly reminded me, and it was a very humbling experience, <laughs> that um, no one's perfect. So that was kind of the awesome reality check that I was like, oh, this is like, I love what I do. And this is just part of it. Sometimes you make a mistake and sometimes it's kind of awesome. <laughs> oh, what is um, one of the funniest moments you can remember from a rehearsal? The funniest moment from a rehearsal? It's a cool question. Um, oh, look, it was probably, <laughs> you meet lots of really cool people on shows. And so, and from that, you, you learn a lot of people's humor. And I think some people are just really great at just capturing a room with their humor. Um, I do, rem I do remember this. It wasn't necessarily funny, but it was like everyone laughed and it was really endearing. But I remember, excuse me, I just had breakfast. So I'm burping. Um, uh, I remember the first, the first day of rehearsal for Frozen, we were learning, we were learning the opening, the opening number. Um, and we were learning, learning, everyone was learning the notes, the notes, the notes. And then that's the, and it's the choral section at the top of the show, um, the voile. And, and it is, um, it's this beautiful, it's beautiful, I'm sure you've heard it, but it's the beautiful sort of choral that, um, song that we're, that we're very familiar with with the movie and it's been sort of rewritten to be like quite like heavy and baritone led um in the show um but it really is this beautiful this be beautiful piece of vocal work and i remember everyone had learned the notes we had done the first run run through of that section and i remember um ak a member of the ensemble who plays one of wesselton's lackeys at the top of his voice like at the back row just went isn't it great to be back? And it was just like the most beautiful moment where everyone just like cheered and clapped. Like it was just the best moment where it really was. It's like hearing all these voices in a room again, all of the, all these professionals who had sort of struggled and waited this long to be in a room to rehearse this show. And we were singing something as beautiful as the opening number to this show. And we finished it and it was like, wow, that, that's cool. That was amazing. Um, I mean, then there are some other moments where like, for instance, uh, the first rehearsal learning with, um, uh, learning with court, um, uh, what, uh, sorry, uh, love is an open door, just learning the choreography because that is, it's just so full on. And <laughs> I was not expecting any of it. And like, like learning the cartwheel and like how to, how to maneuver her over my shoulder and stuff like that's just inherently funny um and it was and it's definitely like a highlight of rehearsal for me because it was just it was just so fun um yeah i think that's a couple yeah. 
um, how do you prepare for your roles? Uh, read, read, read the script. Uh, like read, 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 and then read some more. Um, I don't think I make any decisions whatsoever until, like not to put a number on it, but if I was to put a number on it, upwards of 10 times I will have read it up until the point that I start making a decision on things. Um, and even then, what you have to remember is your decision is never completely the final one because you still have to be in front of a director to tell you what he sees or she sees um, or they see. Um, and uh, so that's step one, read. Um, that's just what I do. Step two is kind of like basic character investigation stuff. So I sort of do this thing where um, I read a script and I go, okay, what, what does my character say about myself? What does the character say about himself? What do, what do other characters say about him? Like, or, or what do they think about him? Uh, and then it's things like, what does my character think about this person? And what does my character think about this person? Um, and that's sort of just fundamental, like, groundwork. Like, that's just, like, who am I? Who do I have relations? Who do I have relationships with? And who, um, who do I um, end up becoming more connected to, so that I can figure out a sort of a journey between between the start and the end, sort of how they connect with other characters. Um, and then it's just, um, you know, figuring out objectives, um, figuring out uh, different tactics and different actions that the character might use to get what they want, and um, essentially just lots of play and lots of just like testing and, and lots of being like, Oh, that could be cool. Or, or just getting really uncomfortable with it and being like, Oh, what would the character do? But I wouldn't necessarily do like <clears throat> that sort of stuff. Um, and then it's only, it's only that sort of ground work that I do outside of the rehearsal room to then be so ready to be completely wrong in the rehearsal room. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, for me, it's like doing as much prep work as I can to make me comfortable with coming into a room and like having decisions, like having made a decision on some things um, to then be so ready to be told no. You know what I mean? Like the, the life of an actor is like getting used to hearing no as much as you want to hear yes. Um, but, but yeah, so that was sort of my experience with sort of, or at least with Hans, it was definitely that. It was definitely like, coming in with an idea of who he was, even throughout the auditions, it was like making a decision and then being told, mm, do it this way. And then being like, yeah, that's closer. Um, and then working that and then coming back the next day and being like, oh, he's changed again. Like what's happened? It's like, okay. So you sort of have to whittle down the character between the two of you and you make a compromise sort of about who he is, <coughs> um, which is kind of fun. I, I really enjoy that. I love being wrong when it comes to creating a character because also creating a character you by by labeling him which i hate labels but you kind of have to when it comes to sort of being super um intellectual with a character and sort of creating him from the mind outwards mm -hmm. um and you sort of you put these labels on a character and it's like oh he's this type of person or he's this energy or mm -hmm. he walks like this because of this and um he has this backstory because the script says this, um, but ultimately like none of that stuff matters. And the only stuff that you see as an audience member is what he says and what he does in the moment, you know? So you can only ever know the backstory and you can never play. You can't play any of that. But um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, um, by labeling him, you set up these boundaries, right? And sort of, I, I love a boundary. I love being told that you can only go this far and this far because it's like, okay, so then I've got this much room to play. Um, if someone said, and this is just me, some people are better at it than others. If someone said, just, just experiment, just go play. Suddenly there's no boundaries. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know the boundaries. So I don't know what I can and can't do, which is silly because as an actor, you can do anything. Um, but... I love a boundary. So when it comes to working with a director on creating a character, 
um, we, we set up boundaries together. We set up a perimeter together about who he is and what he's capable of um, or what they're capable of. Um, and that's, that's my fun. That's my sort of fun. Definitely. And you also like get to like, by experimenting and all of that, sometimes you even like discover things also like about yourself or things that you might thought that you weren't capable of doing. And then you're like, oh, no, it's actually this way. Or like understanding your character better and that stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, 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 with other people's perspectives, you, you, you find a sort of newfound way of looking at anyone or anything, mm -hmm. um, which again, is just part of the collaborative process, which is, which is the whole point of theater is that it's never just I, it's always a team. Um, and also it's never just the director as well. Like, like my, ver my version of Hans is completely dependent on Courtney's version of Anna or Sean's version of Christoph. Like the, the, the actors who you, who you connect to in, in a scene also help develop y you, the character, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. character that you're playing. So, and figure out how you, like I said, how you relate to them, um, which ultimately changes your character anyway. So yeah. you can never know everything. You can only ever know some things and then just see what happens <clears throat> and see who he sort of amalgamate, he, he, she, or they sort of amalgamate into um, throughout a rehearsal process, which is kind of cool. And it's also always developing as well. Like whenever we enter the building, whenever we enter the theater, we are always different people. We've always, we've had a whole day where we've had different experiences. So therefore we as an actor, as a human are different. And therefore the character sort of inherently becomes different as well, because we can't help, but also be us on stage. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's, yes, it's definitely, it's definitely a lot of fun to find different perspectives. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, what are some things uh, that you do to prepare yourself for an audition? Um, I guess it depends. First, first, I think of who am I? Who am I auditioning for? Am I auditioning for a lead or just an ensemble role? I then think, okay, is this like? in the broad spectrum of the show, is this a dance show? Is this a singing show? Or is this an acting show? You know what I mean? Like which one is like the powerhouse? So like if it's 42nd street, it's going to be dance. It's going to be tap. If it's, um, uh, uh, if it's Sweeney Todd, which is basically sung through, it's going to be singing. If it, if it's, what's an acting show? I, I mean, everything, everything's an acting show. You have to act no matter what. But like, but you, you get my meaning. Like it, mm -hmm. you've, the, the, the driving force discipline, I sort of figure out that so that I know what sort of, what thing needs to be seen as the most mm -hmm. bolstered in a way. Um, and then kind of like when you start preparing for, for a character, when you've got the show, read the script. Like, even if you've got, <clears throat> even if you've got, just one side to look at, like one scene as a character to look at, you may as well look at the rest of the script because you need to know the, the, the circumstance in which this, the scene that you are reading for the audition takes place. So you need to know what your character's done up until that point and also sort of where he's heading in order to make sense of what's happening in the scene that you're doing. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so like, that's definitely what I do. I'd definitely still read the script. Um, and really it's just like, auditions are weird. Auditions are like where you, you have to prove each and every time, no matter how many shows you've done that you can still do what you do. Um, and so it's a bit of a weird experience for me personally, because it's like, Oh, I know I can it's like my ego goes oh, I know, I know I can do this stuff. Why do I have to, but no, the point of it is, the point of an audition is to go in for the panel to see if you fit their vision. It's never about you and what you do necessarily. It's, it's like, what, 
It's like, what energy do I bring into the room naturally for them to be able to see, ah, oh, he's kind of like the character. Let's give him a callback so we can work with him. Or sometimes it's just like, he doesn't quite fit the image or they don't quite fit the image. So a no never means a no because you did crap. It's like completely their vision. It's completely their, their way of looking at the character. Um, so basically that's me saying, don't take things personally in an, in an audition. Um, it's never personal, it's just business. Um, but that said, you still do your best always. Um, so that's sort of what I aim to do. And I aim to do my best by being as prepared as I can, learning all the material as I can as quickly as possible, because you never know when that audition will come around necessarily. Like it could be, you could get an audition time and it's like for two days later. Um, and you just have to be prepared. Um, and that means, oh man, I could answer this question for days, but like the success comes from the, the, when preparation and opportunity collide. So the opportunity is the audition. Your preparation is completely what you've done prior to that audition. And that's not just when you get the audition, that's like dance classes, acting classes, uh, sh stretching, making sure that you're fit, um, making sure that you're, you've been singing like, uh, what's the, I was about to say verse, versatility, but that's not the word, no. Uh, make sure you've been singing material that is of different genres <clears throat> so that you're ready for those different genres to come around, whether they're in a show or not. Um, it's like the groundwork that you do as, as, as Thomas that I do and the amount of preparation that I do for no, for no other reason other than just to be ready for them. When that opportunity comes around, it goes, yeah, great. I'm ready. To when the opportunity, opportunity comes, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I've done the groundwork already. I know what I need to do specific to the show now, but I've technically been ready this whole time. Um, and that's like, that's my two cents into like an audition is like, just be ready anyway. Don't, don't start getting ready when you get the audition time. Be ready, be ready when you get the audition time. Definitely, yeah. Um, how do you take care of yourself um, like when you are doing a show? Mm. Um, kind of very similar to what I just said. Um, mm -hmm. but, but like, okay, how do I look after my show? I make sure I eat well. I make sure I have the energy that I need in order to do a show or whether it's one show or two shows on that day um i always check in with my voice i don't think there's a day where i don't think about how my voice is feeling um so so when it comes to, to me personally i i like to wake up and have a very slow sort of moving morning i get up i i journal first and foremost so i sort of write down my thoughts in that moment um, which sort of sets me up really nicely for how, how my brain's thinking on the day. So there's sort of that mental health to it. So I sort of check in with myself. Um, and then it's things like, you know, uh, gently vocally warming up whilst stretching. And then, and then I'll, I'll go down to a gym or the gym or wherever I do a bit of light cardio to sort of get my heart move get the blood pumping and get everything moving um then making sure yeah like i said i eat properly um i get all of my nutrition that way um i then also i like personally i take care of myself by doing lots of strength training at the gym um making sure that all my joints and my muscles are working properly um and then that sets me up really nicely to then warm up for the show. So, so if the way I think about it, if I've already, if I've already done something like, you know, light to sort of light to moderate cardio, which is like getting my breath work going and getting that lung capacity going and making sure that I'm breathing in the right spots. Um, it also gives me a nice time to sort of check in about how, like how my body is like feeling on that day. Like, have I slept well? 
Um, have I eaten the day before well? Um, how's my voice feeling? All of that. Um, but yeah, it's honestly eating, drinking lots of water, um, uh, exercising the way that you want to, but the, and the way that I like to is cardio and, and lifting a couple of weights. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, and looking after myself mentally. So journaling, anything. So meditation is something that I do. I, that I try and do every day. Sometimes it doesn't happen and that's fine, but it is, it is, it is added advantage to myself whenever I do meditate because it gives me a time to a check in and b figure out how my how my body is feeling and and sort of my relationship to the day um and my relationship to the thoughts that I'm having and all that stuff so it sort of it sets me up to be sort of focused um which is sort of a very all of that's a very cut and dry, very bland way of, of saying what I do day in, day out. But um, variation is always really great as well. So changing things up when you can, um, making sure there's not so much like monotony and, um, and too much, rep like shit, uh, regime is great. Um, repetition is great. But if you're not, if, if you're losing the passion and the sort of drive to repeat, then something needs to shift. And, and I, and I, I do that with like going on walks or like, like walking in a different direction to work or from work or I'm um, trying a different type of food or doing a different type of workout, you know, just changing things up or a different type of vocal exercise, like changing things up so that things aren't monotonous and things are able to shift and move because essentially we're, 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 we're a kind of species that, that needs to evolve. And if we don't, we get, we get bogged down. And, and I, and I truly believe like, if we're not like learning and adapting, then we're, then we're decreasing. Like it, it we're either expanding or we're contracting. We, we're not, we're never just still, we're always moving. Um, and we're either doing one or the other. We're, we're either growing or we're shrinking. Um, and I like to grow every day. And that's just, that's just my aim. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any piece of advice you wish you received before joining the arts industry? I just taught a workshop the other day and I said to them, this is, this is part of my answer. I said to them and this, and I said, and, and I admitted to them, I was like, this isn't, this isn't me. So I was, I was doing it, uh, a workshop with Sam Hayden. And I said, I, I said to them, I got a very similar question. And I said to them, I'm not trying to blow smoke up our, our own asses and sort of inflate our egos by saying this, but I wish I had someone like me to come teach a workshop to, to me. So I wish I had the opportunity to have a currently working actor in the Australian industry, at least come talk to me about what it's like being in the Australian industry. Um, and, um, ultimately doing the, uh, doing exactly what I'm doing now, which is like talking about sort of process and, um, how, how I see the world and how I see the industry. I wish I had that opportunity. Um, so ultimately my younger self would have loved this opportunity, like the opportunity that, that we're having. Um, but what would I have told, what would I have told myself? Um, I would have said very early on to, I, I would have said, stop caring about what other people think. But the, what I mean by that is you, you live with you the longest and you, your brain is with you a hundred percent of the time. Everyone else's brain is not. You, they're not with you 100% of the time. So ultimately, I wish someone said, believe, believe in yourself more than you want people to believe in you. Um, I wish I knew that very early on because I found, um, found a strength and a power 
to being to to not, not being a alone with my opinion, not being, not being alone or feeling lonely, but sort of a sense of so, like solitude in, in my belief of myself and, and what I believe to know and what I, what I believe I'm capable of and, and my honesty towards myself and not necessarily seeking appra appraisal or approval from other people because they, they will never ultimately understand your story, nor will I understand anyone else's story truly. So we're all sort of on this journey, whether it's in an industry or, or right now I'm making it a metaphorical sense, but like we're, we, we are sort of all on this journey ourselves because we're walking our own path. No one's the same person as another one. But um, it's, I, yeah, I, I wish someone could tell me, like, that my belief in myself is the most important thing. Um, and then, and then if, you, if you are finding struggle, there's no, there's nothing wrong with reaching out. So, and that's the point, like, if you can't, if you can't manifest in yourself the sort of power and courage that you need, of course, seek it out. Like, of course, phone a friend or catch up with someone or talk to someone about what's going on. Um, and it's sort of in that way, that's, that's part of being human. It's part of being imperfect. And it's part of, and it's part of growing is also accepting that I'm not okay right now. I need to go. I, I need help. And you seek it by asking other people um, and connecting, um, especially during a time where right now we're connecting online, but like that true connection of person to person is, is what we primitively crave. Um, it's why hugs feel so good is, is cause you know, it's a, it's a true connection. Um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely, solidarity and um power in finding belief in yourself for yourself if that makes sense which i think it does yeah i wish someone told me that definitely definitely also like probably another one that's just less metaphorical um don't take yourself so seriously i think in an in an industry where um like i used to take myself seriously admittedly this was only recent that i sort of came to this like fruition of being like, uh, I'm actually just kind of stupid, which is fine. Um, which is okay. Um, so, and I mean, like stupid is in silly, um, which is okay. You're allowed to be silly, especially in an industry that apparently we're supposed to be like really mature, but we're actors. So of course we're not. Um, so, <laughs> uh, don't take yourself too seriously and have fun with it. Never forget why you love doing what you're doing when the work gets hard. When the work gets hard uh, and your body starts to feel tired, you can lose a lot of a belief and you can lose a lot of faith, but you can never forget, or you should never forget why you love it. You should always hold on to that, always. Because otherwise, what are you doing it for? You, you will only ever do it for the reason that you, that you tell yourself that you began it in the first place, which is, for me, I just love it. There's something that I connect to, to this art form, whether it's singing, dancing, or acting, that that I feel like I that I deliver in a special way. Like I I truly believe like there are actors and singers who are like me, but I think there's something that that I can bring to the table that is that is just that little bit little bit special. You know, it's just that little bit different. Um, yeah, and I actually just watched. I'm not, do you watch, um, this is so, super weird, D divergent. Um, do you watch Hot Ones at all? Um, it's, um, it's, it's a YouTube channel called First We Feast. Anyway, it's this guy called Sean Evans. He has, a, he has a YouTube series called Hot Ones and he interviews celebrities whilst they're eating hot wings. Um, like progressively hotter and hotter, like hot sauces on chicken wings or like vegan wings or whatever their dietary requirement is. Um, Anyway, his most recent one was with David Harbour. Um, 
um, from Stranger Things and who's also mm -hmm. in Black Widow now. Um, he, he said this great thing, which was um, uh, only, only he, he got asked, what, what do you, what do you want to give to the younger community if they wanted to pursue this, this industry? And it was only do it if you need to do it. Only do it if you need to do it. And what he meant by that is, and he explained it really well, it's like people are multifaceted. Acting and dancing and singing aren't the only things that we do ever. And as for me, as someone who doesn't like labels, I, I don't think of myself as just a music theatre performer because I know I'm such more, so much more than that. Um, so like the way he was saying it was, only do it if you need, if you need to do it, as in only do it if you feel deep down in like your soul and your like creative power that you have something valid to give to this industry. And it, and it's, and it's in the sense that like, do it, do it because there is an inherent calling and passion within you and not to do it for material things. Don't do it for fame. Don't do it for money. Don't do it for, you know, notoriety or any of that because that is useless. Um, you don't, you don't get, you know, you don't get any measure of happiness from your paycheck. We, they've, they've already done studies from that. Um, it's, it has to come from a need to do it. That, that sort of, and it's not a desperate need. It's just like, oh, I need to express myself in this way. Um, that's, and that's why like, some art is just so visceral and like people just need to give sometimes. And that's the need that I think he's talking about. It's like, if you need to do it, then do it. If you don't need to do it, if you, if you don't feel that you need to express yourself in this way, then there's probably another way to go about doing your life. Um, that's not to say that if it disappears and comes back that you still can't do it. It's just that if you need to do it, then do it but only do it if you need to express it, if you need to express something, which I just thought was really cool. Anyway, Hot Ones, it's definitely hilarious and you should definitely watch it. He did one with Ed Sheeran as well, it was freaking fantastic. That's amazing, I, I really love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any actors or directors that you'd like to work with? Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, uh, oh. See, I don't know. I don't know many theatre uh, directors. Sorry. Um, so I can't like name. I can't name anyone. But I, I certainly, I certainly want to work with any and all directors that I can, because I feel it can only make me better as an actor and as a human. Um, especially considering what you know, I've so, we've sort of been talking about this whole time. It's that connection and different perspectives from people can only help you grow if you're if you're ready to receive other opinions obviously it can be more difficult when you're closed off but like definitely working with any and and all directors is my aim for sure um but i guess like different actors like i mean i'm already working with jim ricks i mean i like i i remember watching her in like in Wicked and stuff and just being like so amazed. And now she's like, I'm like acting with her and it's like fucking insane. Um, so yeah, like uh, there, are pl there are plenty of people that I want to work with, but also like there aren't necessarily any, like I said with the directors, like there aren't any particular actors like by name that I want to like work with. It's just like, I want to work with everyone. I want to work with anyone. Um, because I feel like I'm a very collaborative per what, what I should say is at my best is when I'm, is when I am collaborative. Like I am at my best when I am collaborative. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of not what they wanted with the, the answer that they wanted with the question, but like, I, I don't, I don't, um, covet necessarily or put anyone's name or experience above anyone else's mm -hmm. because ultimately everyone ex everyone's experience is special. So 
there's something to learn with everyone, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's what what I was about to say. That there's always something uh, different that you, that you can learn from everyone. Exactly, and it doesn't matter who they are or what they've mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm pretty sure I've learned. I've sometimes learned bigger, greater lessons from people who have done less than I have experience wise. And mm -hmm. I will always treasure that higher than someone who's done heaps of experience who only gives me like a, a little bit of something, you know, like I don't, I don't, I don't grade them. I, they just are, they just are their experience and they just are their perspective. Um, which if we go by that same rule that all perspectives are special, then you are always receiving something special. We just kind of, which is amazing. This is incredible. It's incredible that you can learn something special um, and something that is unique because um, it ultimately shapes who, who you are, which is super existential, but is kind of beautiful. Yeah, I love that. Um, uh, no, sorry, I got lost. Okay, no, no. that's okay. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite thing about performing? Uh, making an audience feel something. Uh, and I mean something as a vague word because I don't mind what they feel. Um, because that's the point of art is that you you can only present something for them to see it how they want to see it, if you know what I mean, because that's mm -hmm. part of being human and that's part of people's perspectives, is that you can present something and you mean for it to be received very well. And then some people will go, actually, I'm really like distraught by that. That really hurts me. Or it's the reverse. You, you want to hurt people and people go, oh, that was amazing. You can, my point is you can never predict what, what people react, how people react. So I love making people feel things. Um, and I, I love, I love hearing it all like, no, I don't think this is egotistical. I, I, I love hearing an audience cheer. I love the set. I love the sound of a cheering crowd. Um, so that's part of my joy. Um, but also why do I love performing? I get to express myself. I get to explore emotions that I probably wouldn't otherwise feel. Um, and I, and talking of like monotony, I get to not be me for, for two hours at a time. You know, I get to, I get to sort of step out of my own shoes and step into a, a character that otherwise wouldn't exist if I wasn't in those shoes. Um, which I, which I kind of think is intellectually really cool, but it feels amazing. Like I, I always, Every now and then I'll, I'll sort of catch myself in my costumes, no matter what show I'm in and, and go, wow, I'm really not me right now. Like I've, there's, there's a freedom in that. Um, like I, like I cannot be me for two hours. This is great. This is amazing. Not to say that I don't enjoy being myself, but it's like, who, who wouldn't want to be someone else for, for like a little bit. Um, I think there's a, there's a, there's an inherent joy in that. Um, and I guess another thing too, like I always find, uh, singing quite singing and performing quite cathartic in a way that like, uh, sometimes things happen throughout your day and you need to express yourself, but there's no real, there's no real way to do that. Un like until you allow yourself to feel. And I think as an actor, I allow myself to feel a lot whenever I'm on stage. I sort of give myself permission to feel more than I, more than I should. Um, which is to say sort of to open up the boundary a bit when it comes to what I can express and how to express it. So whether that's an expression of love, like in a scene, or whether that's an expression of um, anger or frustration or, or, um, or bravery or sort of just... Um, leadership, like all of these things are sort of expanded and multiplied on stage. And they, and that 
catharsism comes from that expansion of of those feelings um i just don't think you can beat it i don't think you can i don't think you can uh replicate it um anywhere else and and almost like i don't think anyone would otherwise be allowed to be someone else and feel those things if not in a theater you know what i mean <laughs> Like if I suddenly was someone else in real life, people would be like, what are you doing? Um, but like, you're allowed to be. And, and that's, 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 that is why, I, that is why I love it. I love the catharsis. I love playing different people. I love hearing an audience and their reactions. I, I love making people feel things. And I love getting feedback. That's like, sometimes isn't what I want to hear, but it's like what they got. So it's like special again perspective special all of that it's just super cool like sometimes i'll i mean i i i always say this because it's true but it's like when when someone says oh like i hated you as hans or like you like oh i hated your character i was like great i did my job then yeah. you know what i mean like that was the point um which their perspective is that they disliked the character but in turn i'm allowed to receive that and go oh, it means I did a good job. You know what I mean? Like, it, they're, they aren't saying, oh, we hate you, Thomas. Because otherwise you'd be like, okay, let's have a chat about that because I wasn't <laughs> Thomas on that stage. <laughs> um, which hasn't happened. I, I digress. But, like, yeah, I, I love making people feel things, definitely. Yeah, I, I definitely, like, agree with that. Like, there are times that I... Um, watch like certain movies or like even series or like even when I go to a theater um, mm. and there's like the like the villain of like the story and there, there were plenty of times that I was like wow I hate this character but of course like the actor is doing such an amazing job that it's making you feel all of that hate and like uh, like exactly. literally all of those feelings and also like the other character that like I don't know how to explain it that it's actually like feeling bad about like what the other one is doing to them and that stuff. So that's, yes, like, it, it's amazing. It's a very human thing though. Like we, we are, we're all naturally to a certain degree em empathetic towards each other because we see each other in each other. You know what I mean? We see ourselves <laughs> in other people. So, so like, um, like I agree with you, like the, the first one that comes, that comes to mind, which is for me, it was such a, a guttural hate. Um, which then translated to, wow, they are doing such a good job, is, and I'm not sure of his name um, or their name, but the actor who plays Joffrey in Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've watched it, but, like, he, it's such a disgusting character, so disgusting, so vile, and just cruel, evil, like, malice, without any sort of remorse, and you hate him. And then the moment his character, spoiler alert, the moment his character dies in one of the episodes, I'm not going to say, it's like, yes! And, and like that reaction is like, whoa. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Because you, you root against them the entire time and then suddenly they meet their end and it's like, there's a, there's a, primitive, there's a primitive reaction to it. And it's like, whoa, they're good. Like, if they made me feel this, that's incredible. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. What is, like, for you, like, the hardest part of being a performer? Uh, just the workload. Honestly, just get, like, because we do nighttime shows, like, that's the gig. Um, it can often be hard to find enough time to sleep. And because, like we said at the top of this interview, I'm a morning person. So when it comes to like, like, I very rarely sleep in. Like, and if I do, it's only till like 8.30. Like, I, I get up usually at about 7, or if I can, 6.30. Um, because I just feel like I can, that's when my brain is like the, the most ready to sort of get stuff done. Um, but because of this schedule, it can be hard to find enough sleep and it can be hard to find that schedule and to sort of find peace with it um, and accept it for what it is. Um, but ultimately, like, 
you just, and it's nothing special, but it's like, you, you just are tired. You just, you are tired a lot of the time, but it's being tired. Being tired is, isn't the important bit. It's how you best recover. It's figuring out how you can best sort of um, deal with that tiredness. It's what do you do about that tiredness that's important. Um, and I just make sure that I am, I'm always eating well because eating well means you sleep better. Um, making sure that I'm in an environment that's sort of not too cold, not too warm. Um, uh, uh, making sure that I am helping my body be at its best whenever I need to do the show because like Hans doesn't do a lot in the show, but the moments that he does do stuff, it's quite physically taxing. So it, you need to make sure that your body is ready. And therefore I need to make sure that my body's ready to go. And that's why I'm always checking in all the time um, with myself. So yeah, it's definitely like the, the hard bit is, is that you are tired, but the important thing is what you do about it. Um, because, um, and all credit to them because sometimes it, it can be hard for other people um, to cope, but sometimes like, you complaining about it isn't the best way to go about it obviously like it's that thing it's like tears like like tears aren't going to help your situation like you're allowed to be upset you're allowed to be upset there there's nothing wrong with feeling what you feel but it is ultimately what you do about it that will help um but sometimes you do just need to cry i will say that sometimes you just need to cry um <laughs> uh, it's very human um but yeah, it's how you deal with that tiredness, definitely. Yeah, that's one of them, for sure. Um, I have a few questions on here. Yeah, of course. Um, well, there are, there are a lot. Um, <laughs> oh. were, they, were they all your questions? Like, not from other people? Were they just yeah, your questions? Yeah, the ones that I just asked you, like, there are questions that I have, like... You smash it, you're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, you smash it, that was awesome. And then I have some others here from people. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to... I hope that you can see the question. Like, just oh, in yeah. case I mess up like, any words. Yeah, totally. Anything. How do you um, get... When you have a large <laughs> me, your presence following. Um, uh, okay. Uh, this is kind of easy. Uh, I only post what I want to post. Um, and... If I think something is private, I won't post about it. So when it comes to things like like finding a separation between my private life and my social media presence, as it's, as it's put, um, I don't post anything that I don't want people to have anything to do with. Um, and that's not, that's not an offense to other people. That is simply just the power that I have to keep my life the way I want it. Sometimes I'll post stuff that's like a little bit private. Like I might post like my family and I might post um, some like an event that I've been to or something I'm at, but it's never to, it's never to uh, create a connection between my private life and my social media life. It's just to, it's to sort of celebrate what I'm doing and sort of celebrate my family and celebrate those things that I post about. Um, but I'm actually, it's, it's funny that that question's come through because I think um, after, this, uh, after this interview, I'm actually going to hop off social media for a couple of days um, during this lockdown just to clear my head and to sort of get away from all the pessimism that's happening online at the moment. Um, and that's, that's not anything against any sort of um, people's opinions or like, because I, I, I love people's opinions. And I love seeing perspectives, but... Um, honestly, sometimes it can be a lot and I think I'm just gonna just like hop off for a bit just to recoup, basically get back in touch with how I like to think and how I like to see the world. Um, because that's more important to me than someone else's, someone else's business. Um, but yeah, that's definitely how I create. That's how I navigate it is I have my life and then there's what I post, which, which we should all remember with everyone's social media, their, what they post is not their life. It is a snapshot, usually set up, of their life in, in like this beautiful compositional 
nutshell that is supposed to look really appealing and is supposed to reflect their life, but never is. And it's just something that we have to, something that we have to always accept is that social media is not a true reflection of someone's life. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever had a point in time where you questioned the career you wanted to per pursue? <laughs> There we go. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's kind of the beauty of being an actor is that you kind of do all the time. You do question why you, why you chose this career a lot. And um, many a tear has been shed over it. And you, you, you question it because of, I mean, because of many reasons, um, whether it be, you know, a poor, a poor performance you did like one time or like a dud note that you sung or like a really bad action that you played in a, in a scene or anything like that. It can be like the, the, the smallest thing can set off quite a big reaction with your mental health um, and how you see yourself and your perspective of yourself. Um, and so, yeah, there's inherently, then inherently comes a lot of questioning towards, you know, why am I doing this? You know, why am I going through this? Um, and this goes back to what I said before is that when times get tough, You need to remember why you do it. You need to remember why. Because if that, if that why isn't strong enough, then of course you're going to give up. That's, we, we're, we're only human. We, we only do stuff that we want to do, you know? Um, so if, yes, I'll, to answer that question, yes, we question our career a lot. But the counterpoint of that is that a lot of people stay in the industry because we know why we love it and we know why we do it. Definitely. Um, how hard is it to get into professional productions and any tips to success, successfully get cast? How hard is it to get? Uh, well, I guess how hard something is is subjective. So already that's like, you know, life, life is hard. Uh, sometimes getting out of bed is hard. Like... So how hard it is to get into a professional production isn't the question you should be asking. It's, it's how ready are you to put yourself through the ringer to be prepared for an audition? It's kind of like what we were saying before. It's how much do you want it will dictate what you do to get it. So yes, it's going to be hard no matter what production it is. Even if it's, even if it's a, a, a community production, even if it's a town hall production, even if it's like a one, a one night where you sing one song sort of thing, like everything's hard. But if you're ready for it, then hard shouldn't matter. And if you want it, hard shouldn't matter. That's not me having a dig at the question. That's just, that's just an honest, that's my honest answer is that everything is hard. But if you're ready for it, you'll get it. Um, and any tips to successfully get cast? I guess, like, it's the same thing. It's kind of what I said before. It's like, ultimately, sometimes you don't fit the brief. Sometimes you don't fit the vision. And it's not personal. It's just business. It's just them creating a cast that they see is the right cast. Um, you can only ever do your best. You can only ever be prepared for those opportunities. And there, there is always, there's something out there for everyone. Sometimes, unfortunately, you just have to fit the image. And that can, that can be, uh, that's, very, that's a very contentious uh, point. And that's, that's, that's a very, like, you could argue that that is not the point of theatre. But, um, and it's, and I'll chuck this in as well. I think we should definitely be steering away from that, from that image-based casting. Because I, because I, I hate it. Um, I hate it. I strongly dislike it. Um, and I disagree with it. Um, but for now, that is the reality. So sometimes you just have to do all the time. You have to do your best. Sometimes you just don't fit the, the, the image and it's nothing personal. It's just, it's just their opinion. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there was a good question here. Yeah. That all I of these good questions. Lost. They're fantastic. <laughs> I just lost the question. Um, oh, 
I think it was this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. With lockdowns happening off and on in Australia, how do the cast stay connected and primed to get back on stage with each other? With each other. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Adam. <laughs> um, uh, great. With lockdowns happening off and on, it's like, how do the cast take it? Well, we, if we're allowed to, some people do connect quite well, you know, outside of the theatre context. Um, some people, like myself, I, I sometimes don't necessarily reach out for that connection or sort of, um, I, I don't often feel I need that connection. Um, but we sort of, we stay connected via our sort of, you know, our little social communities that we have online. You know, we've got like, we've got Facebook groups and we've got message groups that we all sort of check in with each other. Um, actually, just recently, um, some of the some of the cast um, have created um, an Instagram an Instagram uh, message feed that uh, is, has basic basically has um, little workout challenges, and we all have to sort of post our like results um, onto there. So that's so that's like one way of of a staying connected and keeping primed because you know we're still working our bodies in a way. Um, which is really, which is a great idea. Shout out to Justin. Um, but yeah, it, it ultimately is looking after ourselves is the primary objective. And then if other people need our help, then we reach out to them. But, you know, it is, it is difficult to sort of, to remain connected in a very disconnected time where we're literally forced to be disconnected, you know? Um, so yeah, we sort of just have to trust that, excuse me, that, this that in this particular circumstance this lockdown is going to help it's not going to hinder us and it's going to get us back on track so we just have to a trust and b do what we can to yeah stay primed whether it's to you know work out when you can challenge challenge your peers or um yeah can connect connect when and where you can um because i'm pretty sure you can still like catch up with one or two people outside um, on sort of your exercise walks and stuff like that, all of those different rules. But um, yeah, I, that's not to say though that that isn't like a hard thing to do, but it just is. It just is something that we have to do. So yeah, thanks, AB. I, um, I, there we go. <laughs> I wasn't able to see the questions. Um, mm. Do you have a, oh, I can share Oh, this is okay. really <laughs> weird. <new> technology. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the question was like, if you have any favorite, if you have a favorite musical. Um, it often changes. Is the only thing. It can change from like week to week. Sometimes I'll listen to a cast album like over and over and over and over, and that will become my new favorite for a bit. And then sometimes I'll listen to something else, and I'll be like, Nah, this is my favorite. Um. But like, I mean, I love Company. I think it is such a beautiful show. And it's it's also like, I believe like one of the, because it's written by George, George Firth, like it, he, he is a magnificent sort of, he, he's a, he's, he could very well be like just his own playwright. Like I would love to see more of his material on stages, but like that script alone is like impeccable and then with the music of some time over the top and his lyricism is just like it's it's as if like george's dialogue flows so seamlessly into then stephen sometimes like in, into his songs that you can't help but feel that you are just you that you're not watching a musical you're you're watching like a day in the life of you're, you're watching like a movie um and it's it's quite brilliant. Like I did it, uh, we did my year level in university. We did a production of it halfway through year uh, third year, um, and I got to I got to understudy Bobby, which means I got to do like one show as him, and it's just such a beautiful show. Um, and I I yeah yeah that's it's it is just impeccable. But like I'm also like a modern. I'm also a modern musical kind of guy as well, though. Like I've got, like I've got a contemporary voice, so therefore, like my, my, like I sort of 
find myself veering towards like the Evan Hansons and the dog fights and the um, my favorite years and um, uh, you know the Wicked's and all of that stuff. So that like they're the stuff that like fits well with me and would and I would love to do. Um, but then like when it comes to Sundown, you just you just can't you just can't beat it. It's so good. Uh, let me see. If, there we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would you ever want to uh, get into releasing any music of your own? I do. I'm actually in the process of writing a lot of musical new music at the moment, um, which is a new thing um, because I've never thought of myself as a music. Like I love tinkering away like on the piano and sort of creating little motifs and stuff. And that's just like my hobby is listening to a song and being like, huh, how do you play that? Um, and then I'll play it and be like, okay, that's how it goes. Um, but like, yeah, the answer to that, yes, I would love to release my own music and I plan to hopefully, um, in the coming year or so, because at the moment I am writing a bunch of stuff, which is kind of, kind of cool. It's weird. It's weird writing stuff because you, you, you sing and play other people's music and you connect with that. And then it's like, oh, now I'm really, am just, when it comes to writing, it's like, I'm. I'm literally singing and playing as me. Like I'm not pretending to be anyone else. Like I, I have to sort of be honest, um, which can be tricky, um, especially when writing music. But yeah, it's actually, it's coming along pretty nicely. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm getting so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was uh, there, this question I was going to ask you and I forgot to do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, so it says, do you still get nervous before uh, getting on stage? And how do you cope with that? Um, yes, I do. Yes, I do get nervous. But I mean, sometimes it's... Okay, so for instance, we had our um, Melbourne opening night on Wednesday night. Um, and I was nervous as hell. And And... And like, I, there was like no way of explaining it other than like, it was opening night. Like the, the sort of, the sort of evening that it was, it, it made me feel quite nervous, um, to sort of walk on stage, like getting sort of shakes here and there or sort of overly checking in on my voice, like a bit too much. Um, but I don't, I don't not like during sort of the run of the show, the eight shows a week kind of. Um, run and run of the mill kind of thing is that a lot of the time there's no there's no time to be nervous there's no like there's no opportunity to get nervous because a lot of the time we know exactly what needs to be done and we know how it's gonna how it's gonna go because that's what we rehearse to do and it's also what we've done for the last 200 plus shows um so the so it's sort of like a loose no is is me getting nervous on stage, but it's only ever circumstantial, like an opening night. Or sometimes if I've got family members in, I just get like a little bit nervous. Um, just cause I, just cause on in my brain, I go, they're in the audience. It's like, it's like, it's like part of, part of your brain goes, Hey, try and try and find your family member. It's like, no, no, there's no time. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sing a song here. Um, uh, but, the part of the question that I didn't answer with that is how do I cope with it? Um, there's a great little technique that I learnt. There's many things that I do, but this is my top one and it's a, and it's a breathing one. Um, is I like to breathe in for two counts and breathe out for eight counts. And the point of that is cause scientifically, and this is an end, um, this is a shout out to Andrew Byrne and his book, the, uh, the singing athletes is that, uh, when we breathe out, our heart rate slows. When we breathe in, our heart rate fastens. So a lot of people, when we take in big, quick breaths, it can sort of excite the body and it, and it can create a lot of stimulus. Yeah. But, but when we breathe out is when our heart rate slows and it's when our nervous system gets to calm down. So the point of breathing in for a short amount of time and breathing out for longer is that during that long we, we stay in that resting period for a longer amount of time. So if we're breathing out for longer than we're breathing in, it means we're calming ourselves down. Like quite literally we're calming ourselves down. So that's, that's my go-to always. And sometimes you could do like 
breathe in for eight counts and uh, breathe in for two counts and breathe out for 10. Sometimes I can get to breathe in for two and breathe out for 16. Um, and that's just like a way of doing it. And your body gets used to it. It's actually quite incredible what our bodies can do when we are sort of focused in on the moment of doing an exercise, which is kind of cool. Yeah, definitely try it. It's very cool. Do it. Do it a couple of times and see how you feel. Hmm. Um, oh, yeah. I was also going to ask you this other question. And I yeah. Um, and I can, okay, I don't know. Okay, the question <laughs> in the Technology. is, um, what was the audition process for Frozen like? It was, it was a lot. It uh, and, and again, everyone's, everyone's story, there it is. <laughs> everyone's story <laughs> is, um, everyone's story is different. Everyone's got a different perspective on how their auditions went. And, but like mine was like, I've never experienced an audition like the one that I had. I went in, I'll try and make this as brief as possible, but like as concise as possible. I went in just as an open call, which means I wasn't being seen for a lead or anyone specific. I was just going in to be seen. Um, and so initially I did a dance call. It was first straight off the bat is dancing. Um, we did a bit of fixer up and we did a bit of the coronation ballroom scene. Um, and uh it was at that point that the casting director pulled me aside and said hey we'd love to see you for ensemble cover which basically means and we want to see you for an ensemble track who covers a couple of roles um and in that moment because it's disney i was like yeah i'll do anything let's just do it right and so they gave me a bunch of sides a bunch of songs uh one of which was for the character of hans i also got um parby and at one stage i also had the king's stuff as well um And so I, yeah, like I said, I was being seen for an ensemble and for these sort of different covers, um, which I was so fine with because I was like, yes, let's do it. Put me in a Disney musical. Let's do it. Um, I went, I then sort of proceedingly went back and forth from day to day, um, sort of being called back in to sort of look at this material and then go away and, and then come back and look at another material and then go away and come back. So a couple of dance auditions happened, a couple, excuse me, a couple of acting sort of and singing calls happened. Um, but ultimately like the, the, the way that I was sort of looking at all of this material was that I was connecting with Hans a lot more than I was connecting with the other characters, which is just how I felt. Um, eventually I was super, I was, successful enough to get to the the final day of auditioning where they they um they flew us up to sydney if we weren't from sydney they flew us up to sydney mm -hmm. to do this sort of final day of auditions which again i was only being seen for on some an ensemble track and then to cover hans or to cover um parby at this stage i think the king dropped off at that point um but as i was heading to the airport uh, to head to sydney uh the casting director emailed my agent, my email, my agent emailed me and said, Hey, they want you to look at the Kristoff stuff. I was like, okay. Um, and so I was like, okay, so I've got 24 hours to look at this Kristoff material on the final day of auditions. Um, uh, I was, which is so exciting. Like if you can ever be in that situation where it's like, it's like now or never. And you have, it's like, make or break like you just got to do the work you got this amount of time let's do it it's such a rush it's such a cool feeling i highly recommend it um but uh so lit literally in the uber on the way to the airport i get this email which i thought was amazing the show christoph's lullaby oh he's still there uh i can still hear you but you're oh yeah cool you're, oh, you're, yeah, you're, you're back there <laughs> I'm frozen. No, no, no. Hey, no. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I got this email on the way to the airport. Anyway, I then spent that night. So I went a day early because I was like, I need to make sure that I have a good night's sleep and, and like, so I'm focused. Um, and this was around the time actually of the, um, the New South Wales um, bushfires that were happening a lot of times. So there was smoke everywhere and we had to wear like, ma like this was the time where COVID wasn't a thing. So we were wearing masks anyway. Um, uh, but yeah, I spent that night looking at the crystal material, obviously looking at all the other material anyway, 
got to the final day of auditions and did the dance call, smashed it. Um, I, I mean, I smashed it. I was very happy with myself. Um, and then they called us in to do the cover material. Now, at this point, I had prepared all of the Han stuff, all of the Pavi stuff, and all of the Kristoff stuff. Each of them had about two scenes and, and a song each. Um, so I had a lot of cr crap in my brain. I had a lot of stuff to remember. Um, and I went in, nervous as hell, and they started me off with the Hans material. I was like, cool, the one that I'm most comfortable with. This is great. And so I did the scene going into the first Hans of the Southern Isles, uh, where Anna and Hans meet. I also did the scene where he turns, which are very two the two key scenes that he has. Um, and keep in mind, at this audition, they have a majority of the original production team at the table. So Michael Grandich is there. Stephen Aremus is there. Um, the... Uh, that like the producers are all there, like everyone, everyone's there, all the resident director and choreographer, they're all sitting at this table ready to sort of cast this show, which is nerve wracking enough. Um, but then, so I did the scenes, I did the songs. Um, I then went to walk, I walked out. They said, they said, can you wait outside the door? I was like, okay, I walked outside the door. And I, and I remember going, I remember going, I was really happy with that. But then sort of saying to myself, uh, I'm okay with not getting it. I'm okay with not having this. It's fine. I sort of accepted, like, if it has to happen, it'll it'll happen and I'll just go home and it'll be fine. I'll just have a good night and whatever. But um, Michael Grandich came, then opened the door and sort of let me back in. And he was like, you, like, that was, like, we want you to come back tomorrow because you really surprised us. Um, and we want you to, we want you to do the same audition, the same call for, um, Thomas Schumacher, the president of Disney Theatrical. And in that moment, I was like, okay, I just have to make a few phone calls. Um, I was so excited. I was, I was like beyond, it was one of those moments where I was like, wow, like now I'm an actor. I'm an actor. Like this is, this is crazy. Um, and so I remember making a few phone calls, going back to the, they, <laughs> It's sort of weird things that happen happens in these sort of events. Like they they booked a hotel for me to stay the night. They re, they rescheduled my flight. Like all this stuff happens because of logistics, and it's but it's but it's cool nonetheless. Um, so yeah, stay the night, and then came back at ten thirty in the morning the next day. Did the exact same audition. Did both the Hans material and stuff. Um, while Thomas Schumacher was in the room, he was super lovely. Finished the audition and. It was sort of like, that was sort of the end of it, but like, it was just a, all in all, it was a lot of hard work. And it's sort of the epitome of what I was saying before that I made myself so prepared that even if like, even if they didn't want me for the role, I did the best that I could. Um, and that there's no better feeling than that. But like on this occasion, like there's the sort of the success very, graciously and luckily came my way um only a couple of i think like a week later i got the phone call saying that they that i had like gotten the role i was and i was in such disbelief because like i was only being seen for an ensemble cover initially and now here we are um and it's kind of just it's full full circle like all in all just like a crazy whirlwind of an audition but it's also like the best audition i've ever done in my career to date you know it's the most work that I've put into an audition and it's also the most prepared I've felt for an audition and, and the most like right for an audition that I felt like the most like just on, on point sort of thing where each day was like, I literally did my best. Like I couldn't have done better. Um, which was kind of just like a big, big pat on the back for me. But yeah, that's, that was, that was a lot, but yes, that was my whole audition process. All in all, it was about like, <laughs> six or seven days of auditions spread across like three months. <laughs> um, uh, there are so many questions. Um, <laughs> um, what is your favorite scene in Frozen? Mm. Do you want one that I'm in or just my favorite scene in Frozen? I'll do both. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
the favorite scene that I'm in is the scene that I meet Anna. It's the scene where Hans meets Anna for the first time. So they initially fall into the ice cart and they sort of have to do that scene. That's my favorite, I think, by far. Um, uh, actually, not by far. It comes very closely to um, then the, the library scene, which is the, the scene that he turns, which is just a delicious a delicious scene to play because he sort of starts starts at one end of the spectrum of heroism and then goes to the nth degree to the other side. Um, it's brilliant. Um, but then a scene that I'm not in that I love, uh, I think is... Oh, actually, I do. I'm actually. I will say this: the the song that I love that I'm not in that I that I wish I could sing night after night is Christoph's Lullaby. I think it is the most beautiful song in the entire show, um, and I think it's so appropriate when something's so like appropriately placed in a show, like you, and it makes you, and the way that it makes you feel like that, like that is just right. That is just so perfect it's such a good capsule of of a song in in that moment in the musical and i just i i wish i could sing that if someone if someone could say if someone could say to me hey you're on for christoph tonight i'd be like yes <laughs> um that'd be my next goal <laughs> but yeah definitely christoph's all about it for sure <laughs> um oh there's so many questions. Um, <laughs> um, are you going? Are you going to go back to teaching dance again or workshops like between shows? Um, I don't know about teaching dance because I'm not. I'm not really. A, I'm not. I don't have a dance background, so I feel I'm not the best person to be teaching dance. Um. Like I've got some things to say about dance, but I'm certainly not like a technical, I'm not a technical dancer at all. Um, but yeah, I love doing workshops. Like in terms of like, um, like singing or acting stuff, I'm absolutely there. Um, like, see, like singing sort of anatomy and vocal work is sort of my shtick, it's my thing. Um, so definitely, definitely workshops for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean like, again like on a show it's hard to find time like you and you only ever get an amount of time to recover from the week that has been and also to recover for the week that's coming up which is kind of like and because our bodies are our instrument we sort of have to put it we do have to put ourselves first before things like teaching a workshop which we may very well want to do but we do have to be realistic in that if we we have to make a couple of sacrifices here and there in terms of like connecting and being social and um, doing those sorts of things and keeping ourselves safe, um, ready to do the show because ultimately it's our jobs and we need to be able to do our jobs at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, de uh, definitely, definitely workshops is something that I, I love doing. So that'll definitely be coming for sure. Um, uh, <laughs> um, I'm looking for... I think you can also see the questions. I, I really yeah, don't they, know. I, uh, I don't see the I don't see them as they come up, but I see them when you when you flick them across when you like when you pin oh, them. I okay. think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like there, there's like a whole <laughs> list of questions. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> there are so many. Um, there are some that that are kind of repeated and. That yeah, you that's talked right. about before, so that's why I'm not choosing those. Yeah, you, just, you sort of have to sort through them. It's like, yeah, we've already said that. Yeah, no, I get it. Again, no, no rush. Yeah, no and rush then there are a few that are kind of very personal, and I, I don't know. It's just right. Like, no. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll let you decide. I mean, you could always <laughs> we could always just pop them up, and I'll just be like, nah, I probably wouldn't say that. It's fine. Yeah, no I, mean, no I, I don't. I don't want to like make you feel uncomfortable or or anything like oh, that. It's so, so, it's that's so why fine. I prefer I'm, not to I'm choose that. I'm in my comfort zone right now, so <laughs> nothing can make me uncomfortable. That's fine. Oh, uh, there was a question. Oh, this one. Um, <laughs> what's the most underrated costume in program? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Aiden. Um, 
uh, 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 what's the most under underrated costume in Frozen? Uh, you know what? I don't think the um, hidden folk get enough uh, praise in their costumes. The the sort of the troll equivalents of in in the show, um, especially um, both um, Boulder and um, Parby's costumes. They are like like. And, and Jacob plays Pubby and Jamie Lee plays um, Boulder. Their costumes are phenomenal. Um, and they, I don't, I definitely don't think they get talked about enough. Like there's so much detail when you see it sort of close up and yes, from far away, it sort of just looks like everyone's wearing vines or, or like bushes and stuff like that. But there's, there's so much like detail and the tattoos that they all wear all like represent a, 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 a different um, Disney show like a different Disney musical or, or sort of Disney uh, movie, uh, which is really cool. There's just so much cool detail in, in that costume alone. So yeah, that's definitely the most underrated one for sure. Um, wait, there was one here. Um, oh, what's the, what's the best advice you've ever been given and who gave it to you? Mm. Uh, what's the best advice? The best advice that anyone's given me. Um, and who was it? Uh, look, I don't think I can think of anything specific, but sort of something that something that is coming to my brain is like, I remember when, um, and this 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 is very personal to me, so it might not. It might relate to some people who who are also sort of like me in terms of like temperament towards work, um, but also um, uh, I'll just say it. Um, I I got told very um, early on in my university sort of process during uh, studying music theatre was uh, stop overworking, and it is the most simple advice ever but it didn't, it didn't hit until like I was out of uni and like in shows and, and what this, and I'm pretty sure it was my, it was either my acting coach or my singing coach. I'm pretty sure it was my singing coach. Um, shout out to Chris Nolan. Um, he, I'm pretty sure it was like, it was just a reflection of like, it wasn't that I was like overworking literally. It just means like, there I can afford to do less in order to get to get more um and so like vocally it was like having having a bit like more focused sort of tension rather than like heaps of tension in order to sort of open up my resonance and to sort of get those things up and out of my throat rather than feeling like it was getting stuck um and again that's something that I, that I then that then sort of landed when I was in a show I was like oh that's what they meant and then even with like that's that's a multifaceted you know um piece of advice as well because I can go oh am I doing too am I doing too much acting or like schmacting like is there too much like feeling and not enough like being you know what I mean like so like it can it can be applied to just everything and um like stop the the phrase stop overworking sort of then turns into a question where I go, ah, oh, am I doing too much right now? Like whether it's like, it could be like building a character. It's like, have I done, am I doing too much character building? Like, am I turning this into too much of an intellectual character and not enough of a, like a real person? Um, it could be like singing, it could be acting, it could be, oh, it could even be dance. It could be like, what can I like soften up to make then the dynamics more, more open and, and have more polarity and more extremes in my movement, you know? Um, so yeah, stop stop overworking and just do and and like in turn what that means to me is like do the work that is necessary and then allow the rest to be easeful and um sort of natural and come and come out of um spontaneity and impulse yeah that was definitely definitely a good one um what is your favorite thing about the frozen cat? That they're all genuine human beings. 
Um, and I mean that in the most sincere way because we've rehearsed and done this show through a pandemic, which no one has ever done in the history of anything. So we're, we have this special relationship with each other where we've come into this rehearsal period and to this show with such gratitude for what we do and with such gratitude for being able to do what we do that it was inevitable that we all kind of just had to come together and be, and, and as cliche as it sounds, and be like the family that it is, you know. We did have to look out for each other. We did have to hold ourselves accountable for how we were sort of following the rules and, and keeping everything going. But, but yeah, the, the best thing about this cast is that they truly are all genuine human beings. Like all the way, like from Gemma and Courtney, Matt Lee, uh, um, Sean Sinclair, like everyone up, up in the principal roles, um, uh, uh, Algin, um, uh, both the Svens, J uh, Jonathan and Lockie, and then all of the cast members who, and all of the ensemble, like we had to work as a team from the get go and we always still do through the show. But these are people who are just good people. And I, and I actually believe that they've, every, everyone has the talent to do this show, but this show wouldn't, wouldn't be the way it is if you didn't have honest people who, who were who were honestly just like great compassionate and kind human beings and we're surrounded by them every single show and that's what makes the frozen cast super special definitely super talented all of them like i couldn't say i couldn't say more about them but like i mean sorry i, I couldn't i couldn't like put their talent like any higher but like for me every everyone's ability to be uh, beautiful people is like top. Um, how can we reach out to you for coaching or mentorship? Oh, look, I, 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 I'll, I'll be honest. I'm at the moment is not the greatest time for me to be doing any sort of mentorship or coaching. Um, because we have just opened up in Melbourne and things and because of lockdown, things are starting to get a bit hectic and sort of uneven, uneven grounding, so to speak. Um, so not to sound selfish, but right now I'm sort of, I am just focusing on my trajectory at the moment. But um, that's not to say that in the future that will open up or not. But um, yeah, for now, it's definitely just a focus on, just focus on what's ahead of me, really. Uh, I'm trying to look at all of the questions. That's okay. Um, okay. <laughs> um, there's someone that is asking for you to sing something. I haven't warmed up. Otherwise, I would. Can you <laughs> sing? Can you sing something for us? Um, <laughs> it's, it's some. I I don't think I will. I I'm, I haven't I haven't warmed up. But um, but I will say something funny about that question. It's that it's it's my thing about boundaries again. So when someone says, "Can you sing something?" Because there's no boundary. There's no like, "Can you sing something from this or by so and so?" My brain goes, "Ah, yeah." <laughs> so, so like, uh, unfortunately. No, I, I I won't sing anything. But um, that's such a funny question. I love that question because it's like, for me, it's like I I don't know what you like or you what you want to hear. What if I sing something you don't like? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like when they ask you like, what song would you, like in a party or any kind of that stuff? Like, yeah, what song uh, would you like me to play? I mean, and if, I, like, if, uh, if I was gonna sing, like, yeah, like I'd probably pull out my guitar and sing something. But like. Uh, yeah, it's, it's such a funny question. Like, I mean, what, what I probably would have sung is like probably something by Ed Sheeran because I've been listening to his stuff a lot recently. Um, and I love his new stuff, but yeah, <laughs> not, not, not now. Yeah, that's really. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you understand. I'm just, I'm just saying it for, for everyone watching. <laughs> 
I'm not doing it because I don't want to. I'm doing it because I probably shouldn't. Um, okay, I think... Uh, okay. I'm, I'm reading all the questions. Like, they're all so different. <laughs> They're asking, um, oh, what tea are you drinking? <laughs> ah, I am drinking peppermint tea from tea. They, they don't sponsor me or anything, so I'm not selling this to you, but it's from tea too. It's just, they're just peppermint tea. It's really lovely. And it's now cold and I don't know why I'm drinking it. <laughs> oh. Actually, what I'd be interested in is like, like where everyone's from that's watching be so cool mm -hmm. where it, it, can people post where they're from i'm very interested in where everyone's i have a few i have a few friends from here like yeah there's a friend of mine here who's from the u.s then there's another oh, one cool. that's from mexico and amazing. then the rest i don't know where they are all from <laughs> yeah right well that's cool it's amazing yeah <laughs> so good such a good thing you've got going um I'm trying to read the rest of the questions just to see like if there are any other <laughs> that you may that, that you can't answer um mm. yeah like most people are, are actually like asking uh for tips on becoming an actor and like if you need to get an agent and that stuff oh yeah well age is something good to talk about because it's sort of a it's a bit of a red herring because people go, oh, I need one. I need one. I need this. Um, I got Jersey Boys without having an agent. So, and that, and that's a, that's a single, that's a single case. Like, that's not like, that, that would be like me saying, oh, because this happened to me one time, it's a foolproof plan. Don't get an agent, just audition. That's not what I'm saying. But all I'm saying is you don't need an agent to get into a show. However, they are your best source for connection to the industry because an agent knows a lot of people. <laughs> um, and that's the point is that you have someone who's not only looking after all of your business affairs, who's looking after all of your, he, they're acting as your middleman between a production and you as the actor. So there's that logistics to having a, to having an agent. Um, but also, and, I'm pretty sure everyone will say this as well. An agent is a very personal uh, choice. And also it is a choice because you get to decide. An agent doesn't just come up to you and go, hey, you're mine. But you choose. And also, ultimately, they are... And I don't think that this is not uh, uh, putting... This isn't meant to sound bad or anything towards agents. But, like, when you when you are with an agent, they are, like, you're their client, but you pay them a commission for, for them being your agent. So technically you are, you are paying them to do some of your job, which is like emails to emails and all that, like financing. It can be like uh, getting connections with people, going to workshops, going to like, uh, uh, like having setups with like other clients and sort of collaborative opportunities. Um, it can be really handy. So like, uh, so I guess my, my point is like the, the perspective of an agent is that they are your direct source to the industry. They're not necessarily a necessity, but you require them if you're going to, if you're going to be looking into networking and getting to know people and people getting to know you, which is probably the important bit. Um, yeah, important. They are important, but yes, deeply personal, get someone who works, who, uh, matches your personality who can sort of relate to you and connect with you and talk to you in the way that you like to talk rather than feeling a bit alienated from someone. And I, like my agent is, he's, he's incredible. And we sort of both get on the same level, which is kind of what you want. Definitely. And um, do you have like, I know that for example, in the U S they have like this uh, union and non union thing. Yeah, I was wondering, like if in Australia it was like the same or like it was different. Yeah, I mean, I I think I think they are different. Um, I I don't know fully what the US the unions and non union stuff means, but I can only I can only assume it means some sort of like some sort of like uh sort of like actors equity mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, 
but here 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 in Oz we have we have sort of the what's called the MEAA the uh media and entertainment um arts MEAA arts allegiance i think uh, i can't remember what it's called um MEAA which is that which is basically the act is the actors actors equity um but i don't think like with 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 this equity here it even if you're not with it, it doesn't mean you can't get into a professional show. Um, it, it, it just, um, it comes with the affordance of sort of um, actor protection when it comes to um, working in this industry. Um, and sort of, again, networking. It's, it's a community, it's a hub of people who are within the industry. So therefore it's sort of something really special to be a part of. Um, and they also help fight for actors' rights when it comes to contracts and stuff like that too. So they're a multifaceted um, uh, organization and they're just filled with incredible impassionate people who want to protect actors and who want, who want us to, you know, keep working, which is excellent. And it's also run by like actors themselves as well. Like it's everyone knows everyone and everyone knows what everyone's going through. So yeah. So it's a really cool, really cool industry over here. Yeah. Yeah, like we don't have that here, so that's why mm -hmm. I was like curious about it. And like, yeah. I know that in the US, like you may have like more opportunities for auditions or like to get in a show uh, if you are union. But if you don't have that, it's like you don't have. Many yeah, shows. I think yeah, and I think with the states and stuff, I think it's like yeah. My understanding of it would be like if you're with the union, you get like a a time slot first. Or, and then yeah, if you're exactly. not with the union, you you can only get like an open call. Um, yeah. I think that's how it works over there. But um, that's certainly not what it is here. Like you can, um, again, it's but it's simply preference. Like you can either be with the equity here, or you can, or you don't have to. And the same with the agent. You don't you don't have to have an agent, but it's it's probably preferred if you did because because mm -hmm. you want that connection to to the industry yeah yeah like here I, I honestly like don't know very much about like if actors actually have an agent or that stuff because I don't know like theater I, I, I feel like it's completely different like to other countries like my yeah. country is like, really really small so it would make sense yeah maybe but, yeah um, I... but for example theater is not like I don't know like really kind of appreciated here like you yeah, don't see right. it like, as a job exactly it's just like yeah oh. like, if you say i'm an actor then everyone is like oh then you're like i don't know that typical lazy person yeah i get yeah, like to work it and, must you know. be like this sort of just like cultural differences which happens as well america like over in the states it just it just happens to be um a well-respected industry over there and also they have claim to sort of sort of owning theater in a way, you know, they created different types of theater that we know today, you know, they created the, the traditional American musical, you know, they created that format, um, like starting from like vaudeville and then going into sort of add like adding songs into, into a play. And then, you know, Oklahoma came along where it had songs that progressed the story, you know, um, just like that development um, happened over there. So I guess there's that, like ownership of sort of music theater and therefore it's like it's like high on their on their like respect level um mm. and it's and it's similar here in oz as well like i actually it's sort of i would say it's between where you're at and where we're and where the states are at where like like we're kind of also considered lazy in a way if you wanted to use that word but it's like but it's more like um it's <laughs> the cliche conversation is like, oh, I'm an actor. It's like, oh, okay, but what do you do for a living? It's like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> um, people just think it's a hobby. Um, so yeah, it's like demystifying that. But um, also there certainly aren't as many opportunities here as there are in the States either. You know, they're, they're going to like <clears throat> two auditions, three auditions a day. Um, whereas we get one big musical coming maybe every four months or five months. Um, if that, you know, um, but obviously there are, there are like, um, uh, profit share musicals. There are, uh, pro am shows, which are like, you, you get paid, you get paid on a contract, but they're not like a full entitlements contract and 
like you get on tours that are like still paid, but they're not like, like I said, like MEAA equivalent. They're not like the top equity contracts, which is just up to complete, which is completely up to the production and in a business sense, how much money they've got and how much they can, you know, put on this show. But yeah, so there are opportunities in that way to like do what we do and do what we love. But um, to, for the sorts that to make, that you need to like make a living off of, it's those opportunities come very rarely, very rarely. Yeah. yeah, like most actors that I know from here, they, at least all of them, <laughs> probably all of them, they have like, a, apart from doing like theater, they have another job. Most of them actually yeah. teach like in academies and that stuff. Yeah, right. So that's how they basically earn all the money. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it, it is really hard, at least here, like to live off that because like, the salary isn't uh it, it isn't that much actually no it's just not it's it just is not very enough. very low it's not sufficient to live off of yeah yeah totally like it's enough to sort of pay some bills but um yeah and, yeah, and that's you, it like literally <laughs> yeah that's right yeah no totally understand that that's for sure mm -hmm. no very fortunate very fortunate um i forgot what else i was gonna say <laughs> um You're forgiven. You've had a you've had a big day. <laughs> yeah, it was a real long day, <laughs> and like my morning, it wasn't that great. Like a high school, right. it was really bad. So okay, okay. yeah, and now like I actually like started this week like going to school like in person. We were online, and now we're in person. So right. So the first so the first so time. Weird. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So like this week's been all in person since being online. Yeah, it, it was it was so hard like to um, get used again, like to getting up like at six thirty a.m. and mm -hmm. then like in, in especially in winter, like that's what <laughs> that's like the worst part that I that I like the the part that I don't like at all. Yeah, about all of this. I mean, I don't like going to high school either, but <laughs> but like in winter is so much harder like to get up bed because I'm like. You know, very totally. comfortable and like, yeah, I'm feeling like really well there. Yeah, you, and then like, every, going. like everything feels like it's against you for sure. <laughs> yeah, are you like a hot weather person then as well? Like, do you love heat? Well, <laughs> it depends. Like, oh, I'm really. really, I'm really weird. Like, when I'm in winter, I want like uh, summer, and when I'm in summer, I want winter. So <laughs> it's like I'm not good with any of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, do you, do you, um, over there, do you have, um, uh, your temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius? Celsius. Yeah. So, so like for me, like I love a solid, like 19 degrees and like, that's good for me. Like that's a, that's a nice, like warm, but not cold. Um, mm -hmm. if it's like, once it starts hitting like 24, I'm like, uh, oh, it's, it's getting too hot. And then if it, but then if it's like what it is now, which is like, To, actually, how cold is it right now? It's 11 degrees right now. So, like, that's cold. Oh, no, it's eight degrees. That's cold. Um, and so I avoid it as much as possible. But I always tell myself, like, uh, I would rather it be too cold than too hot. Because if it's too cold, I can just layer up and just put on heaps of clothes. Yeah, But if it's too hot, too. there's no <laughs> amount of clothing that you can take off that can make you cold. <laughs> It just sucks. <laughs> yeah, like the only thing that I think I like about winter is like the clothes. I like using like, I don't know, hoodies and all of that. Um, yeah. But sometimes I don't like using like too much clothes on because I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> you feel so, like a marshmallow? A... <laughs> <laughs> like my, mo my mother is always like, oh, you're you like for high school today is like very cold. Now put this, this t-shirt and then this other one. And it's like, three t-shirts and then like, <laughs> yeah. the jacket and then yeah it's so hot <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant yeah that's exactly it ah uh, what a what a world we live in <laughs> um so i don't want to like take more time with you mm -hmm. like we've literally been talking for like two hours <laughs> yeah yeah well it's been amazing it's been a great two hours But yeah i had an amazing good. time and i wanted yeah. to thank you like for your time <laughs> And for answering all of the questions and yeah, like I, I really loved like all of the answers and the advice, like it was so, so mm. helpful. So I wanted My to thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. You've, you've got a really cool platform on this to sort of talk to people, the, 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 peop the people that you had. So yeah, I, I, I mean, kudos to you for, for doing this sort of stuff. It's really cool. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and again, it's like I said, it's like you're you're giving opportunities to people who, who otherwise probably couldn't get it. But like you're sort of you're actively creating these opportunities online, and it's it's really awesome. You're doing a really cool thing. Yeah, I am. I honestly never thought that I would be able like to do all of this, because um, actually, like on social media, I'm I'm not like that. But like in real life, like I'm very very shy. So it's like yeah. very hard for me like to maybe reach out to people and that stuff. And, yeah, totally. And like, I never thought that I would be able like to send a whole message to like different actors and then like get to have them here and like ask mm. them questions. And I don't know, like I never thought about it, like I would, that I would be able to do it. But totally. it has definitely like helped me a lot, like with my shyness, for example. Totally. Um, just like theater, like doing theater to it helps me a lot with that too. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I like, I remember my first uh, live streams and interviews that I did. I was like very, I, I, I wouldn't talk that much. I would just be like, oh, okay, the question and that's it. <laughs> then to the other question and that's it. And now it's like, I'm very, I'm like more talkative. Yeah, um, you're, you're, you seem so comfortable with just like having a chat, which is, which is awesome. It's a great quality. But it's obviously mm -hmm. something that you've like learnt and sort of had to practice, which is so admirable. It's really cool. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You've got a really good thing going and I can't wait for, for, for more stuff to come out. It's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pleasure. Well, um, I hope you have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you very um, much. Thank you once again. For yeah, and have a good sleep. Yeah, look after yourself. <laughs> it's been a big day, so yeah, let it all let it all just wash away, and hope you have a hope you have a good sleep. Yeah, definitely will. <laughs> awesome. Take care. Until next time. See you, Lucia. Bye.